Good morning, pregame crew. It is Friday, January 14th. We are on the precipice of a very long weekend with Monday off. I will miss you all, but we're here today and we're going to finish the week strong. It is 8.24 a.m. Eastern, 6.24 a.m. Mountain Time. I'm Chart Gal Lori. You're at the pregame show. Let's get acquainted. How are you? Hey, Veronica, Stephen, Greg, Sang, Night Truck, Gareth, Lisa, Blue Dog, Fat N, John, Gareth, Tammy, Chuck, thank you, Chuck, Jorge, Bobo. Good morning. You know what I was just thinking right before I went live? Because I always say, good morning, pregame group. Is we need merch. If we had pregame merch, what would you want it to say? Queen of the Mountain, pregame crew, letter rip, tater chip, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. What do we do? What do we say on the merch? Good morning, Topher. Let me start ripping. I, I love chatting with y'all, but I know why you're here. It's not to just chitty chat. Y'all are here for charts. So let me jump into a couple requests before I get started with the indices, commodities, crypto, and movers and shakers of the day. Let's look at Microsoft for Steven. We were looking at the separation of those EMAs and man, did that play out. So Microsoft is weak, yes, but let's look at it relative to NASDAQ. Is it any weaker? I mean, possibly, maybe. Let's look at distance from the 50 MA. Okay, so NASDAQ is 5% from the 50 MA on the daily. So let's look at. Yeah, it is weaker. You're right. You're right. It is weaker. I just couldn't see it visually. It definitely is weaker. So here's the thing. It's weaker but it's going to be oversold so in the four hour we're at 30. so it may be oversold more than others so it may get its bounce its bounce started faster than the others that aren't as beat up so sometimes playing the top lead bear bearishly can can kind of kick you in the butt so you got to be careful with it use price action as always hourly rsi is 25. definitely would not be shorting it here you're shortening the hole so our trades need meat on the bones, meaning we need to be able to get a nice pocket of money or a chunk of change off of a move. The move was up here at the rejection of the eight EMA on the daily, that was the move. Here, you're just coming in for just like crumbles, just like little crumbles on the table. This is not meat for sure. So there's that. Resistance 30633, 31104, your next support, is we lost the 304.69 390 so this $300.90 prior resistance and then $300 psychological okay what else and I, I posted in the TCG room this morning Apple's really standing out to me because it's over the daily 50 MA and we are not positioned well as a market for Apple to cons to consolidate not at all so that could be a problem if apple were to consolidate look how far above we are the uh, daily 50 ma on apple compared to nasdaq we're well below it five percent below it so apple needs to consolidate sideways and then move up in order to save the nasdaq here okay what was the next request? Baba looks constructive. Let's go look at it. That Charlie Munger news, that couldn't, I mean, the Berkshire Hathaway doubling their position, that couldn't have come at a better time for Baba. We are over the weekly eight EMA. Yes, it looks constructive, but we still have a lot of tree branches overhead. Let me show you what I mean. This is a tree branch. This is a tree branch. And let's pretend like the 12 EMA is here. And then the 26 EMA is here. All of those moving averages are stocked, are stacked overhead. So we do have some ceilings over us. But again, that news was just awesome. We are not oversold on the hourly. So maybe that's the trade. Who asked about it? Gareth? Neat name, by the way. Maybe that's the trade, is getting the hourly oversold bounce, possibly at 12747 area. What would be hourly oversold? Using our TCG back burner indicator. 
So that would be around 128.45. You see that gray number there? That's the hourly oversold. So 128.45 kind of matches up with 127.47. I like that trade, Gareth. I like it a lot. And I normally don't like Baba bullishly, but I like it so much I'm adding it to the Queen of the Mountain trades. Good call out. Okay. We have one minute left. Let me see if I can squeeze in one more ticker, mana. I'll just do mana on Coinbase. Dan has been trading this one, looking for the daily higher low. Actually, what is the trade setup he was following? I can figure it out, I'm sure, because he trained me. So we're looking for the monthly higher low on mana, and we're trying to nail this daily higher low to get that monthly higher low. Hourly could be a bear flag. Your support here is 281. You can melt down all the way to 263 and still be in the running for a monthly higher low. So just scale out of your oversold bounce entries, scale out of those while keeping your swing core so you can stay nimble. Re key resistance 2914. All right, let's get this party started. Good morning, lovely neighbor. Man, there's a lot of people. There's gonna be a lot of viewers today, you know why? Because there's fear in the market and every time there's fear, we get a lot of viewers. So if you're here today for the first time or the hundredth time, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Go check us out on chartguys.com. Check out my profile. Well, don't check out my profile, gross. I had to click profile. Check me out on Twitter, chartgallory. And let's get started. So I'm Chart Gal Lurie. I'm part of the Chart Guys community. We teach technical analysis. And I do this little thing called the pregame show every weekday morning. Let me hide that. And I go over indices, crypto, commodities, movers, and shakers of the day. And I give you my queen of the mountain setups, meaning setups that I think have a high probability of working. Do they always work out? Nope. Can I guarantee it? Nope. And I am giving you setups. I am not here to teach a fishing pole. So I always like to go over tips and tricks on entry, but let me see if I can, where's one of my magic boxes here. So these boxes that I put on whatever chart I'm looking at, whatever time frame, look at gold here. This is the setup. The setup is top fishing gold up here. And then you've got to get your proper fishing pole to say, okay, I use Bollinger Bands, I use EMA targets, I use pure price action, and I'm going to do inside bar breaks on the 15 minute. I'm going to top fish at 15 minute low or high. I am going to look for overbought on the hourly. Those are all the different fishing poles for entry. And we teach you a ton of fishing poles as part of TCG. We have a stair step video that is primo. So, I give you setups and I I go over fishing pole tips and techniques every day. But we have a whole educational course on entries and exits on the fishing pole. So that's what I do here. Welcome. Man, you, if you just got here, I'm already lecturing. Don't I sound like fun? If you're interested in the screen setup or my chart setup, it's on the screen now. Okay, let me get this off, save some real estate. So our four hour RSI is at 35. We are not oversold on ES four hour. On the hourly, we are oversold. And I am on bounce watch this morning, but I don't have long-term bullish hopes and dreams. I have short-term oversold bounce mentality, meaning I'm just looking for these dead cats to bounce. And then when the bears start covering, I wanna be a part of that momentum on the way up. And then I wanna sell out on a pop and then enter short. So what I'm really looking at is on the hourly, these EMAs. Any bounce back up to the EMAs, bears will be looking to reposition. So prior support could act as resistance and that becomes a key level. So now 4638 on the way up could be an area where bears look to cover on any bounce and the bounce isn't guaranteed at all. The US 10 year has some hoppity hop in it it's pulling back at the moment, but I was looking for a potential top fish on the four hour on the US 10 year. And by top fish, I just mean a short, and I'm not gonna actually short, go long ZB or anything like that, but I'm saying I'm looking for a lower high on the four hour, and that should help NASDAQ. And the VIX has got some real, real giddy up and go. 
I guess 12 hour I was looking at on this. So on the 12 hour, we're looking for a lower high compared to 23.33. Could we just blast through it? Sure. But odds favor a lower high on VIX. And that is what the market bulls need. We need VIX to sit down, chill out, go take a seat. So if we can get VIX to chill out today, chill out, then the market could get that bounce, okay? So that's what we're looking at. I am looking, I could literally just watch this VIX chart, which I watch it on toss, just a heads up. But I watch it on toss, I look at slash VX, and I am looking for this to take a break. I actually just shorted this. And I use VXM. So that's a micro volatility contract and shorting the VIX is one of my favorite things to do. Will it work? Who knows? I don't know if it's going to work. I have 2182 as my stop. I actually have 21 like 90 as my stop. It goes in 5 cent increments. So, I'm looking for the VIX to top out here and then that would help our bounce. And all of this could go kaput. As soon as the market opens, all bears bring all their volume and then bulls are toast. So we got to be ready for all scenarios. So on the daily, the bears brought it yesterday in volume. Do you see how little volume we had relative to the bear volume for us to float up the way that we did? That's so easy to do when we're floating up. When we're coming down, they got to bring the volume and they brought the volume. And speaking of volume, I have this chart on my brain, so I'm going to go cover it right now. I almost made a mistake yesterday. I was doing live coverage around here. Let's see. It was, I'm looking at the time, right here. So where volume is written. So let me, not that. Okay, so we were looking for a potential volume climax. That's going to be hard to see. So we were looking for a potential volume climax to, to buy Netflix. So I had someone ask me about Netflix about right here. And they said, hey, is it a good time to uh, bottom fish Netflix? They have earnings next week. So we have different levels over from the past. I'm not going to go look those up now and scroll and make y'all dizzy. But we had some levels in this area. Let's just pretend like that level was 520. And I said, whoa, 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 no, no. And I almost went along with the trade idea. Oh yeah, it looks great. Market may be finding a bottom here. And then I looked at the volume and I'm like, no, 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 no. There is no volume climax here. Volume tells us so much. It's one of the more neglected indicators or pieces of data that we have. So we have to look at volume if we are doing oversold bounces, if we're doing longs, whatever we're doing, assess the volume. I don't talk about it enough and I'm gonna use my uh, religious upbringing <laughs> thing or whatever phrase, I was convicted. I was convicted this morning, oh my God, I don't talk about volume enough. And I almost messed up there yesterday when I was live saying, well, maybe oversold bounces do, we have earnings next week, yada, yada, and then boom, volume. No, 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 no. So please, please, please put a yellow sticky on your computer. Look at the volume, assess it. It will help your trading tremendously. All right, let's get some key levels. 3638 is a key level. Resistance 4667. But I'm looking, let me get a side arrow here. Because sometimes I try to show y'all stuff, and I don't know if my cursor is doing the job to call it out. Look right here, 464150. That is my 8 EMA. So whatever your 12 EMA is, if that's what you use, I'm lo looking at that hourly EMA on any bounce up. Now I'm saying any bounce up because it's not guaranteed. So we're hourly oversold, but look how oversold we can get. Always remind yourself of the past. Look here, 1966. Here. 13. So hourly can get really oversold on uh, ES, so it's hard to use it. Lord have mercy, help me. Help me, help you, help me. How do I get this RSI back? Oh, well, I guess I just do that. Okay, so just remember that when we're trading these oversold bounces, ES is not nearly as extended as it has been in the past. Hourly RSI on NASDAQ. 
look how low it was over here. It's off the chart. It was down at 13 as well. So please remember that. And our hourly EMA is at 15434. So any dip buys that you buy would be looking to exit. 15414 would be your first resistance. And 15434 would be a target. So let me spell that out. Resistance is actual price historical price action. Target can be price action or EMAs or FIBs. So targets are different. Targets encompass more categories of price action and potential areas of interest where resistance and support mean just price action, pure price action. So target, someone could use the word target loosely as they're targeting a certain FIB retrace. So let's go do that here on the FIBs. Oh Lord, y'all, I'm so wordy today. I'm just gonna go ahead and ask for forgiveness. Wrong way. So whenever we find a bottom, if 31250 was the bottom, a target for bears would be 15578. That could be a, a continued bear flag. So whenever we find a bottom, we could draw a FIB retrace and then start targeting that 0.382 for our last runner if we bought the, the, bounce, the uh, dip. Oh, Lord. More coffee, please. U.S. 10-year, we went over that. RTY, RTY hourly is not even oversold. But this, it's a two-day now. This potential two-day inverse head and shoulders is still on the table as long as we hold, what day was that? Last week's, was that last Friday? Last Friday's low, I don't know, one second. January 10th, so that was Monday. As long as we hold Monday's low, this inverse head and shoulders is on the table for RTY. YM hourly is just now getting oversold. And I would watch the banks. The banks are going to control YM a lot today. So we're losing that 4080 on XLF, which is great because a lot of us are loaded with FAZ. And your next support is 4060. So we had earnings this, this morning. Let's look at JPM. So we had earnings and they're down 4%. Why? They beat. They beat handily. Why? Because it was priced in. Look at these names from the last earnings. So let's do that price. From last earnings to now, we're up 6%. So they basically, they being institutions and whomever bought this, they priced in this earnings reaction. And Dan has been watching these rising wedges and that was a perfect, beautiful one. So that's the problem. So just because you see a beat, don't go buy those dips all the time because it was priced in. And that's what they're telling you now with the selling. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you hit the like button, I will be more succinct. Not really, because I can't, but anyway. Okay, so resistance on the hourly, a target area would be around 35928. And your next support is 35641. The VIX we went over, we need it to sit down. Bitcoin, potential hourly bear flag. So Bitcoin's bounce is a little bit ahead of the market. So look at ES has not really even put in a green candle yet and Bitcoin has. So let's see if Bitcoin is a canary for the market, meaning that its bounce is a precursor for ES potential bounce. Resistance on Bitcoin, 42716, support 41752, then 4159160, and then 41274. Hourly EMAs have Bitcoin pinned, pinned to the gr ground. What do you call that in wrestling? Pinned to the, the mat, pinned to the mat. Yeah, that's the ticket. Ethereum, it's bouncing as well. Potential hourly bear flag. Support, low of this bounce, 3188. Your next support is 31. 80, 3145, and 3075 gold. I have no love for gold bulls. They had their opportunity with Dixie. Look how the dollar just fell over. The dollar gave up the ghost. And then gold, 
that's all you got? I mean, they should have gone to higher high. If I'm a gold bull, I'm mad. Why didn't you get over 1833? I'm not really mad because I don't get mad at inanimate objects, but just a figure of speech. 1829 is resistance, support, 1819, 1818. These gold bulls have got to get their act together and really take advantage of this dollar asset class being down. Okay, so I ask Joey. Joey is our jungle funk, if you don't know. He is a chart guy. I ask permission to share a chart. So I've been talking about this. I don't move that box. That box has been there last week, this week. And oil has been my biggest profit maker so far this year. So from January 1st till now, oil is my most profitable trade. And here's the crazy part. I've only shorted it. And I've posted 90% of those trades in our commodities channel. And I am up nicely on oil short. And that it's like, what? What? That makes no sense. I've been shorting every pop on oil. I shorted yesterday. Well, what day was that? That wasn't yesterday. Wednesday. I covered a ton yesterday. And then this morning I added back. I have only been shorting oil because I'm looking for that weekly lower high. So now I'm going to show you a chart. This is at the edge of my comfort zone because oil is beasting. Why am I going short? And it made me think of this quote. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone by Neil Donald Walsh. So oil is pushing me outside of my comfort zone. So Joey sent this. I don't know if you could see it. His charts are really dark. But up here, my gosh, oil is a beast. And that was the area we were discussing a short. And then down here, oil is trash. Sorry about the F, like whatever. Oil is trash. It's terrible. That's where you should have been buying. And I'm not saying that good trading begins at the edge of our comfort zones or prof profitability begins at the edge of our comfort zone, but it does begin at the edges of the charts. So where we have resistance, this edge, if you're shorting a raging beast, it's uncomfortable. You just have to have discipline to get stopped out when you're wrong and then re-enter if it sets up again. And this is where we are right now. Oil's a beast. Oh my God, it's, it's a beast. Odds favor a lower high. So am I comfortable waking up and seeing $83 on oil? No, but I opened up that platform as fast as I could and added five or six more contracts to the QM. I trade QM for oil short. So I hope that helps someone. Again, that doesn't mean pushing your comfort zone on position size, no. Risk, no. But the edges of the charts, yes. Okay, that was a speech and a half. We have the rig count today. Don't forget that. 8158, 8139 is your support and resistance is the spike of this bounce. And on any bounce, I will add. I've covered some here. So what I added up here, I've covered a little bit. And now I want to add back. And I may be wrong. It may exceed 8541 because energy has just been really outperforming. But... I'm going to trade probabilities all day, every day. Okay, Nat Gas. What a crazy chart. So we're looking for this monthly high or low. We gapped up Sunday and we've been running ever since. Well, this was Sunday right here. And we were running. And then yesterday, it promptly gave it almost all back. So we're looking for a daily high or low. So this is at the edge of my comfort zone. I am long nat gas. I'm looking for the daily higher low and I'm attempting to nail the monthly higher low. Will anyone send me a trophy if I nail it? Nope. But odds favor a daily and a monthly higher low. I'm going to go with odds. And the hourly EMA has the bulls pinned. We need to get over 4305 key support, 4097. EMA 8 and EMA 12, Mary, here's the difference. And bear with me in my drawing. So if you have, let's pretend like these are candles, okay? So bear with me. Actually, that's a terrible way to explain it. Let me explain it like this. So if we are on a one minute chart and we are looking at 9 a.m., the price is $10. And so I'm just going to, so then we 901. 902, 
Sorry, y'all. There's probably a way faster way to do this that I didn't think of. So whatever the price is at, and just pretend like we're doing a one minute chart. If it's at $10 and 10, let's say it's 1002 here, then 1005, an EMA takes the average of all of these and it weights more heavily the more recent price action. That's an exponential moving average. A moving average will take the sum of the data points. Let's say it's an eight moving average, eight simple. It would do this candle uh, price entry, this price entry, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. It's gonna get eight and then it's gonna take the average and plot it. So right now, I hope that makes sense. And a 12 EMA will take 12 periods and plot it. So right now, on that gas, one hour, the eight EMA is at $4.20. So if you take the average of the last eight candles and weight more heavily, the more recent action, you will get an average of 420. A 12 EMA will take those last 12 candles, weight more heavily, the more recent action, and that average would be 422. So that the 12 EMA is 422, that's the average, and the 8 EMA is 420. 8 EMA is faster. I'm an options trader, so I want to know more about the more recent data, and I want faster signals. So that's why I use the 8 and 21, and it's part of the Fibonacci math series. Lord, it is 650, and I haven't even gotten to movers and shakers. So for those of you who have to break off for work, here you go. Here's my movers and shakers, and I'll keep going, but I just want you to have the data. Apple, Apple was beautiful. Who got it yesterday? I, I said I'm going to start setting alerts. So I told y'all 17650 looked to top fish. It went over it by 12 cents and down she went. I pray someone got that one. That was a goodie. So now I'm looking long. I'm looking long oil, oil, my Lord, Apple. And I'm looking around 170, around 170 to go long oil lottos, lotto calls for today, and I'm looking around 170. Below 170, it's 168 area. Baba. Baba, someone just asked me about this, so I'm looking long Baba around 128 for Queen of the Mountain long trade, CMG. So CMG got an upgrade this morning. We're looking for a monthly higher low. And when we're looking for a monthly higher low, daily oversold is typically a good area to look for that. Oh crap, it's already bounced $31. When I had this up this morning, it was at 1504. So 1500 would be the stop here or right below it for a potential long if you're looking for a swing idea to nail that monthly higher low or attempt to nail. Ford, here I go being counter trend again. Ford, short. I know it's crazy. We're just coming off all-time high. But a bounce up to 2539, 2550, I think would be a nice short area for Ford. It's pulling down a little bit more than I would like in pre-market. I'd like to get a bounce to short. JPM, I just wanted to show y'all what was happening with financials. I don't have a trade on this because right now you're shorting in the hole and going long does not make sense. I just wanted to show y'all what was impacting XLF and give you an example of when earnings are priced to perfection or otherwise known as priced in. LVS, long. A long idea on a pullback to our, so the setup would be around $40.50 or $41 even if we can get a pullback. There's some Macau news that came out. LVS and Win are both benefiting. Netflix, daily oversold bounce, weekly oversold bounce. I'm looking for a swing here, not weekly, sorry, daily. Daily RSI is 19. And I'm looking for a swing, and I would love to enter around these levels, 505, 504, even 500 for a swing into next week, looking for a bounce going into earnings. NASDAQ is still pulling back a bit. These bounce ideas will not work if the market doesn't help us, so please remember that. So 1010 is your support, and then 980. So we may get a bounce opportunity off of 980 for Tesla. Hourly is oversold. And we're looking for a daily higher low when the hourly is oversold. We're going to have to hold 980. We're coming down pretty hard in pre-market. So 
980. Let me set a tar uh, alert. Just to let me know right before it gets to 980 so I can set up my order, look at the market and see if I want to take it. XLF, I was going to suggest a short, but it's already pulling back a little too hard. I would short any bounce in XLF today. When, same setup as LVS, I would look for a pullback buy. XLE, short, short, short. The queen of the mountain trade, short XLE. I had a short on yesterday, pulled it off, and now I'm looking to short it again. Short any bounce on XLE and XLF, and that's why they're up here. Tesla, I'm looking for a buy above 980. Netflix, I'm looking for a swing buy around 505. And Apple, I am looking to go long around 170 is what I said. Yes, 170 and then 168. So let me set an alert here. 170. And it'll make me go look at it. Doesn't mean I'll take it. All right. When y'all type in all caps, y'all yell at me. It, it feels like y'all are yelling at me and I don't like getting yelled at. Okay, Wells Fargo had a double bottom at 55.76. I don't like banks long here. I like a short on banks on any bounce. I would short Wells Fargo on a bounce. John confirmation buy is funny. Oh, so funny. So all these people want to give me pointers. Go get a pregame show. All right. Y'all use stop losses. Hit the like button. See y'all Tuesday.